Raz Reviews. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Solo, A Star Wars Story. The sequel prequel starring the character of Han Solo that nobody asked for or wanted. But here it is, now I have to watch it and talk about it. This movie was originally supposed to be directed by Lord and Miller, who are uh, behind the Lego movie. And about halfway through production, they were essentially fired from the movie. It was a pretty controversial drama that happened and then they were replaced by Ron Howard and Ron Howard went on to make a lot of reshoots I mean like rumor has it 80% of the film has been reshot not only was this movie something that nobody wanted it also had a really rough start I wasn't looking forward to this movie at all I didn't want a solo Star Wars movie it's unnecessary this movie is so unnecessary it's like sunscreen in an underground bunker you can put it on your face and it's all right, but it's not really gonna do you much good and you don't really need it. And this is exactly what Solo is. Having watched it, it's cool, it's okay, it is what it is, it's nothing more, it's nothing less, it's not bad, and it's not amazing, it just is. I was really worried that this movie is gonna turn out to be, <gasps> oh my God, it more or less turned out to be meh. So get ready for a lot of meh, meh in this review. It really felt like an episode of a show, like an episode of Star Wars Rebels. Just like, you know, an episode in the middle, there's these characters and they have to do stuff and then they do it and it's over and hooray. So there was stuff in it that I liked and there was stuff in it that I didn't like, so it really towed the mediocre line pretty well. But I'm gonna start with the top three things I liked about Solo. Number three, chemistry. The actors and the characters in this movie have a lot of nice chemistry. We get to see uh, Han Solo meet Chewie for the first time and Chewbacca was great in this movie. I mean. <laughs> How do you not like Chewbacca in any movie? <laughs> Chewbacca is as Star Wars as Star Wars gets. And their chemistry was there and, and it worked. The chemistry between him and Daenerys was pretty fine. She was a pretty fine character. And the banter between Han Solo and Lando was pretty good. Their chemistry is great and it was very entertaining to watch. Um, I like really Harrison's character. He was okay. Eh. Paul Bedney did an okay job at the villain. Eh. The only character that actually didn't work for me was the droid. I, I didn't like the droid. Like she had a shtick about her being like a social justice warrior kind of thing and I didn't really care for it but her interaction with Lando was pretty nice to watch and again they also had really good chemistry. The number two thing I liked about Solo is the cinematography. This movie sets itself to be a kind of a sci-fi space western and it utilizes those things visually in a very nice way. I thought this movie looked Fantastic. The set design is amazing. Everything looked dirty and outdated. It didn't feel like they were in a in a you know vacuum of green screen and blue screen and special effect. Everything felt real and nice, which is a little bit unusual and very refreshing to watch. And the way they used lighting in the film was actually pretty impressive and stood out to me in a very positive way. The number one thing I liked about Solo was Lando Carlisian. Donald Glover steals the show as Lando. He's definitely the highlight of the film for me. I enjoyed every single scene and moment he's in. I really liked his character. I really liked how he kept calling him Han, which is like a, a shout out to how it was in the original <laughs> trilogy. And he did the same thing, which I thought was really cool. I really thought he was very charming. He was very entertaining. He wasn't doing a Lando impression. It was definitely his take on the character. I just wish there was more of him because he was definitely the best thing about this movie. Man, Donald Glover and Josh Brolin are having the best summer ever. So Solo had a bunch of things about it that were nice and enjoyable while I was watching it, but there's also stuff that didn't work for me. So I'm gonna tell you about the top three things I don't like about Solo. Number three, predictability. This movie is unbelievably safe in its storytelling, in its character development. It just plays it as safe as it can. This movie is so safe, you can practically store your jewelry and your money inside it. There aren't really many twists and turns or anything that you wouldn't expect to happen, which makes it a lot less exciting. I found myself able to predict maybe 80% of what happens in this movie. Like, you know, oh, 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 he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna meet Chewie. Okay, Millennium Falcon, he, he found it. Oh, look, it's Millennium Falcon. Ooh, he's gonna meet Lando and they're gonna do a thing and, and they'll betray and, and then they'll, oh, okay, yeah, makes sense. Number two, lack of depth. In keeping with the theme of playing it safe, this movie is also very, very shallow. It completely remains right up here with story, with characters. It doesn't really dig deep into Han Solo's character. We don't really learn much about him that we didn't already know. The actor did an okay job at portraying him. It was his own portrayal. It wasn't like a, an imitation of Harrison Ford or anything. But at the same time, it felt like you know like in documentaries when you have this reenactment of what's going on? You already know what's going on because we know everything about Han Solo and now we're just watching it being reenacted by a character that we know for a fact 
is not Han Solo. But we know he represents him in a way, but we're not connected to it emotionally because it's not him. There wasn't anything really emotional, philosophical, or thematic throughout the film that makes it stand out or makes it memorable or have some sort of impact. And that's the problem when you keep going back and making films about characters that are so beloved and so iconic, is that you keep yourself trapped in this box. Anything you do outside of this box is going to compromise what people already knew about this character. So if you take Han Solo and give him like a drinking problem, you're gonna mess with the original image of Han Solo and it can create a negative backlash. And we've literally seen that happen like five months ago. Yeah, Han Solo is intact in this movie. He doesn't get ruined, but that's really boring and it makes the film and the character feel flat. The number one thing I didn't like about Solo is why did it happen? The whole concept of making this film in the first place is kind of a losing battle. I have a big problem with the fact that we seem to be stuck in the time between episode 3 and episode 4. And we have to know and make films about everything that has ever happened inside those couple of years. And I for one am tired of it. Star Wars universe is huge. There are so many amazing stories to tell. Grand Admiral Thrawn, Knights of the Old Republic, the Knights of Ren, the Sith, the Temples. There's so much out there that is so interesting and compelling and you can make films about it without ruining what you've established already and without touching these iconic characters or storylines that everybody's afraid they're gonna get messed up. So I don't understand why. Why are we here? Why are we making this movie? It's not a bad movie. It's not, but it's also, yeah, this is the first Star Wars movie that I'm not excited about. And I don't see a lot of people around me excited about it either. And, and that should say something. It doesn't seem like this movie is gonna make the numbers it needs in the box office, especially that it had extensive reshoots, which means it like costs like 250 or 300 million dollars. So I'm hoping this will change this attitude of milking and milking this storyline and these characters. Let's do something new. I don't want an Obi-Wan movie. I don't want a Boba Fett movie. I don't want a C-3PO movie. I don't want a Princess Leia uh, coming of age story when she's 13. I don't, I don't want these movies. Let's move on. Let's expand the universe. So Solo a Star Wars story was okay. I liked it. I'm glad I didn't hate it. That's a win for me. But it's definitely my least favorite out of the new Star Wars movies. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. So, have you seen Solo? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section. And let me know how do you rank the new Star Wars movies right now. What is your ultimate list? Put it in the comment section. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to tell me what you'd like me to review for you next. See ya.